All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for showing up for our May 11th grassroots call. Um, there's just going to be the three of us tonight, I believe. So um, uh, this may not be a very, very uh, lengthy meeting tonight. But uh, anyway, uh, as we know, we're we're uh, revising our uh, district, our captain recruiting program here, and uh, uh, so we're going to talk about that a bit here. Then we're going to cover the LMT report and the training report. Um, talk about uh, the co-leader policy, and I got another item I want to add on to this. I forgot to put onto the agenda. It's nothing, no big thing. But um, so as far as the DCR uh, report and that program, um, I'm going to uh, conduct a conference call with the members of that team. And we're going to be doing that Monday evening, and uh, this Monday evening, and we're going to be covering the just kind of a review of everything. Uh, but we're also going to, part of that review will be um, the, the chart that we're going to, the, the, the tracking report that we're going to start using um, is the one that, that Rachel had put together for Mindy. And can you all see this? This is uh, Mindy's uh, report, and uh, so we're going to set up all the uh, districts to be called and assigned and so forth and so on. We're going to set this all up for, um, for all the districts. So this will be the, the uh, report, the format that we'll be using. And uh, I guess... Uh, a question I have for you is um, I think we have about five or six people on that uh, recruiting team. Should we be including them in our um, grassroots meetings going forward here? Uh, no. I, I mean, you have to give me a reason why you would want to. To? Asking, you know, people to... To, unless you have a specific goal. To get them involved and show them uh, the funnel and show them what their calls, um, uh, what happens to their, to their, um, the people that they uncover and during their calls. I think you would do that during the call you already scheduled. <laughs> right? Listen, you know I'm always going to be on the side of, you know, don't ask people to sit in front of their computer unless you absolutely have to. <laughs> well, well, can we bring them in occasionally, do you think? Of course. I mean, if, if, I, think that if, I think that, for example, I think that this first call you're going to have will introduce them to all this stuff. We'll show them the spreadsheet. You have to understand they're going to be, you know, you're going to be getting regular updates. They're going to be able to update their own spreadsheets. So hopefully you'll be see, you know, you don't need to have a conference call to get updates from them. And then I think once you get to maybe the end of the month when they're finished with this backlog, I think it might make sense to have a call at that point to talk about how we're going to deal with the new people coming in. So I definitely think there might be times where we're going to need to bring them in to talk, but I, I just, I'm, I, I'm not going to support, you know, I can't be supportive of kind of, asking these people, on, you know, they're already taking time to make calls. I think it, we really need to be respectful um, of not asking them to do a conference call unless we absolutely need to talk to all of them at once. I think it takes, I think it's a lot. You know, these people making calls, you know, they're also district captains. You know, they, they schedule these calls when they're convenient for them. So they might have a couple hours on a Tuesday afternoon. The idea of having them have to sit home on a Friday night for a conference call, I think we need to think really hard before we ask that. Well, okay. I mean, maybe George disagrees with me since he's now gone. I don't know. His picture's gone. George, your picture's gone. Your face is gone. I'm no, I'm uh, I'm here. I'm watching. Okay. Turn off my video. <laughs> I got a, a quick question. Is there a reason to the uh, 
left and right justification in the uh, column, the uh, open districts column? Yeah, what happens is that sometimes when I edit it, because I, I, cha I move districts in when they need to be recalled and I move them out, um, and I often do that for my phone, and on my phone I'm unable to edit the format, so yeah, no, there's no reason. It was just that when I make edits to the sheet on my phone, it doesn't let me get them to look nice. I have to go to my computer to do that, so there's no reason except just that I was using my phone. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay. Um. I, I, I would tend to agree on, on the other matter. I would tend to agree with Rachel. I mean, you oh, know, if you no. have a black or, you know, every other <laughs> one call, uh, how, how's the feel for a change? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I think um, you can, yeah, like every question we do something, and, you know, you can use a spreadsheet on your call with them and stuff. And, yeah. Because they don't, there's, they, I can see them being here to see this, but there's no reason for them to be involved in, like, the training and stuff that we discussed, too. I mean, too. the perfect example is Mindy's been working on this for, since the beginning of the week. I haven't spoken to her on the phone or had a conference with call with her once. We slack every day. As you see, she's already completed three, four districts, and she's updating it. She says she doesn't find it confusing. You know, she had a couple of questions. We slacked back and forth. Um, I, you know, I, I told her going in that if she felt like she needed to talk, you know, she could call me. She called me, I think, the first day because she had a couple of questions, um, but we ended up just resolving it on Slack. So I think that you know, we should play it by ear, but I don't think there should be any reason why people should need help or they need explanation to follow this. Um, well, okay. <clears throat> I will, uh, I would like, I would like to do that once a month thing because I think, uh, um, I think it would be helpful to make them feel like they're part of the team and for them to see what happens uh, once they find uh, an interested applicant, and uh, so. Uh, I mean, I think you should definitely show them that on on our call on Monday. I mean, I think it's great to show them that. I just don't think you need to keep you know doing it over and beating them over the head with it. <laughs> I know you like to do that, but sometimes you know those of us getting beat over the head every you know every, all the time, their heads get kind of sore from getting beaten on all the time. So you know. Hello, you know. hello. Uh, <laughs> I, I, you must be muted or something. I, I'm not hearing what you're saying. <laughs> Holy smokes! I didn't expect this tonight. I'm sorry. Okay. You know, I'm, get, I'm like getting ready to go on vacation, so I'm sort of like. You know. Yeah, yeah. I know you're getting real, real. <laughs> Up to date. <laughs> Um, when is okay? When is it, Rachel? When are you going next week or what? Uh, next week, um, middle of next week till the middle of the week after. Oh, okay. I told Dale well, to try not to some... let the entire place burn down while I'm gone. You know, I was just thinking yeah. you're 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 yep. not going anywhere. You're 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 uh, you're you're staying here for vacation, so you could pop in on a on the conference calls once in a while. Well, A, I'm going to Chicago, and B, I could, but I'm not going to. You're not going to, okay. <laughs> Boy, I'll tell you, you are really bold tonight. You were just really... <laughs> I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, do you do you think you're going to have uh, um, a shell or something for us to look at Monday on the Monday evening? Oh, no, I'll have the, I'll have the, the thing ready for Monday. Well, yeah. All right, oh, yeah. all right, all right, okay. No, now that you now that you've you know not so subtly been pressuring me, I'll get it done. <laughs> I'm beating you over the head, right? George, George, just so that you know, I slack with Dale like two days ago. He asked me when I would have the spreadsheet done. I said before I go away on vacation. So that so that was on like on Wednesday on Thursday on Wednesday. I said I would have it done before I go on vacation. He then calls me the next day and says, "Is it, did you finish it yet?" <laughs> no. <laughs> All I have to do is explain. All I have to do. And the one you already got, right? Yeah, but I have to go into each of the districts and count and stuff like that. So it's, you know, I have to fill it in as well. So, you know. Anyway. Just, just kind of, you know. Same spreadsheet. Okay. Okay, let's talk about the LMT then now. And uh, I see uh, I see some names have dropped off of here that, should have been, should be off. So uh, uh, I did some updating on this today on um, 
some people that I've been trying to get a hold of without any luck. Um, this uh, Marsha uh, Dwager, Dureg, Dureger, I believe is the way you pronounce it, as a volunteer. Um, er David Todd, I, I've been trying to get a hold of him, and uh, uh, he's not responding to me. I don't know if Mindy needs to try and ca uh, connect with him again. I copied her on this last email I sent to him, Rachel, just so you know. Okay. Uh, why is Mark Bot say open? I updated that today. What? Mark Bot. Mark Bot. Mark, Mark Bot is in process. Yeah. I don't know. You I put that in there. Oh no 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 no! I updated. I, I just talked to him like half hour before the call. I did not touch him. That's in process. That. Yeah, he's in process. All right, we'll make that correction. Oh, well, I talked to you. David Todd should be in process also, Dale. <clears throat> See, initial contact, it says yes. I guess I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I didn't hit enter, so I don't know. Fine. My, on my notice, sir. All right, all right. Um. <clears throat> um. Ken, Ken Kashuba is going to be talking to this uh, Wallace Aiken um, state content writer, uh, I think, Monday evening. Uh, we got another state content writer uh, applicant, Ben Hauser. I, I talked to him on the phone for a little bit and had to, had to uh, take care of something, so I've uh, been trying to get back with him, and he's not responding, so I don't know. I don't know about that. What else we got up here? Now, what were you saying uh, about Mark Shota, George? Uh, oh, that, oh, that's District 83, isn't it? Yeah, he's in Region 3. Uh, he, let's see, Robert Glass, Bob Glasscock is the captain there right now. And uh, when I turned Magic over, uh, over to Gary, <coughs> Uh, Gary got hold of Bob Glasscock, and both of them contacted you. Uh, that's that's a normal process when there's an existing district captain. Um, myself or Gary or whoever, you know, if there's an existing district captain, I'll call the I'll call the district captain, and let them know that we have somebody else for their district, and ask the two of them to get in contact. Well. I just want to make sure we don't mix them The people are going to get along. I'll, I'll notify the current district captain that there's somebody else coming down the pike. And I'll, hold uh, on, hold on. You're, you're breaking up here. You're breaking up here. I'm not hearing what you're saying. Okay. Um, if there's an existing district captain, I'll call them and let them know that there's somebody else in the pike. Okay, coming coming down the river or down the pike. <laughs> Because um, right. I don't want to mix oil and water. And then I'll call the person and do the first interview. <coughs> and I'll, I'll inform the new person that there's an existing district captain and that I want the two of them to make contact with each other. Uh, and Gary has done that with Matthew and Bob, Bob being the existing district captain and Matthew the new guy. And uh, every, everything seems fat and happy, so... Uh, um, I just got the text from Gary just before this call, so I guess Matthew is ready to be onboarded. Okay. Okay, so he is definitely then being selected to be a co-leader. So, uh, so that means he, he will go through the training program and everything, just like a, just like a district captain. Yep. Okay. All right. Now, I'm on board. That was a, that was an item I wanted to talk about later on. Was the co-leader policy? Um, that sounds good. The way you're handling it. Now, uh, keep in mind, though, if a district captain just wants someone to be on their team as an occasional helper here and there. You know they can they can do that. They can pick that person out, and 
We don't need to interview them or uh, put them through any training. Uh, so this the, be district, like the district captain has the leeway of selecting those individuals. Yeah. Okay. It would be like somebody that they pick up from their calling their volunteers and stuff like that, right? Right. Okay. Um, someone else answered. John's not home. The guy hung up. What's this, John Stuve? Is this uh, is this also? What district is he in? Oh, one hundred. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> it's been kind of weird. First time I tried calling him, um, I left a voicemail. Uh, left him. I left a voicemail on his mobile phone. Uh, he has a home phone also that's different. I called that, and uh, no, wait, wait, wait. Oh, I try. I called him on his mobile phone, but his voicemail box was full, so I couldn't leave him. That I called his home phone and got a disconnect signal. You're like, ee, 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 ee. so I called him. Tried calling him again today. Somebody else answered the phone, said John wasn't home, and hung up. That John wasn't home? Yeah, someone else answered. John's not home. The guy hung oh, up. Okay. Before I could <laughs> what time John would be home or whatever. Well, all right. I don't know. If you look at the the, the uh, survey questions for John, uh, he's been in all kinds of stuff. He's, been, he's talked to or met with... Uh, uh, the, the state legislatures for his district, not, not the state, but the Congress. Um, oh, who are they for him? Uh, I don't like banks. Young, maybe? Anyway, the Washington, D.C. representatives and senator. He's met oh. with them. Uh, I, you look at his survey questions. They're really rather amazing. I don't know. All right. Well, was he, was he, you said that his cell phone, the cell phone number, voicemail was full. Did you maybe text send him a text message? Uh, yeah, I think I did lead send him a text. Yeah, I usually do that when I something like that. Yeah, okay. I would have had it in my notes. Okay. Put it in the so okay, Steve Harkness. Are we about are we about to give up on him then? Sunday night, he's dead. All right, all right. Okay, well, we need some more names on here, don't we? Okay, let's go then to the um, training report. Uh, this ought to really be good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, Miss Rachel, have you? What have you got to say for yourself here? All uh, right, nothing. Um, <laughs> I mean, I'm waiting on people. You know, I'm waiting for people to get through module three and module four. I mean, if you go down to the bottom. Um, I only was able to finish up um, Thomas Schultz this week because everybody else is stuck in a module three or module four posture. So those people should start coming out of there soon. Um, George, did you did you do Larry Hudson? He was scheduled for yesterday, I think. Uh, Larry Hudson. Is it set? You see, it says here on the chart. I know it's cool. Andrew Freeze. Schedule for 10 May. 8 p.m. Yeah, I guess I did. That was yesterday. Ooh, did I? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. That was yesterday. Is he done? Hmm. I uh, I don't think I did. <laughs> All right. Well, will you will you after we get off this call, will you please yeah. reach out to him? I'll call him, grovel him. Damn it. All right. Um. So yeah. So like I said, if you see Dale, if you look, I mean, everybody's. You know, everyone's pending either Module 3 or Module 4 currently. Um, as soon as they finish Module 4, you know, I email them and get them finished up. So, um, okay. and unfortunately, we haven't had any new people 
come in. Um, Joseph Kristen is getting close to his two-week limit. Um, I haven't heard from him. So just that's, that's the last person. You know, I just took off, um, what's his name, Sean Carter. Uh, Stephanie Fortune looks like she might be taken off soon. So unfortunately, I don't know what's going on. Um, the other issue that I'm having is, is Dale, you mentioned Ed Paraguay is on the D.C. recruitment team. Have you spoken with him lately? Yes. yes. Because I sent him a Slack message about scheduling with Paul on the 2nd. I haven't heard from him. Um, I think I even I even sent a, might have sent a message. I don't know if I sent a message just to George. So I don't know what's happening with him. Um, he's He's been sitting around, um, as you see, for a while. It's been over a month since his last module. Um, I, this is where I get kind of lost because I'm like I, I don't understand what I'm supposed to do with people that are, you know, waiting for other modules and they're kind of just hanging out. Um, I know there was some confusion, obviously, for a while with the whole Paul module thing. You know, for a couple of weeks we weren't sure people were just hanging around, but Paul has been doing. You know, Paul's been on the ball, as you see. He's been scheduling people, doing one-on-ones with them. So um, the last communication I had with Ed Paragai was that I made sure he got all of Paul's information. I asked him to let me know when he viewed Paul's video, and that was that was you know almost ten days ago. I haven't heard back from him. Um, Would you? Uh, uh on Ed Paraguay, uh, Gary is his region captain. Sure. Would you please uh, ask Gary to contact oh. him? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, it's so nice to have a region captain to do this, isn't it? <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Right. See, you're, that's, that's a new concept to you, isn't I love it? it. I love it. On a positive note, just kind of mention Gary because I need to give him a shout-out. Gary's been doing a great job. Um, after that whole snafu with him not putting – um, phone notes in when he was calling people because remember there were, and it kind of reminds me that there were a lot of conversations we had over the last few weeks where you know Dale you would be frustrated because he would say you know he's supposed to be making calls in this region and does in this district and it looks like he made no calls now we know what that was what was happening is that he was putting in text notes instead of phone notes so it wasn't showing up as a contact but after speaking to him and explaining it to him um, he's actually going back into the districts he called and putting in phone notes referencing the text notes. So those districts are all now showing up as having contacts. Great, so, great, great. You know, because my feeling is that, you know, I want you to be able to look at the state and see that there's a name under last contacted by and for everybody. So he's he's right. really going above and beyond, I have to tell you, as far as, you know, I told him I would do it for him because I know that's a lot to ask to go back, but he's made a lot of calls. I mean, going through, you know, just to go back, I know we kind of skipped over this, going back to the D.C. recruitment when I was checking, I mean, He's finished, there were districts on there that were in red on George's chart. I mean, he's finished District 82, 84, 90, part of 97, and every district in his region except for one. So he has certainly been making a lot of calls. Good, good. Just wanted to make sure you know that. Um, But, yeah, I mean, it's like I said, as far as the training, you know, there are people who are taking a really long time to get through it. I mean, I don't. And as you see, we've lost a lot of people. Um, Luella, oh yeah. So what's going on with Luella? I mean, is she is, is she is um, uh, she's been assigned. So I send her a, a letter. Okay, so she's, she's taken. You did send her the letter. Are you going to send it? I'm going to send it then. Okay, so I'll take her off. Um, yeah. I mean. I'm just, yeah, so like I say, I mean, I see Mary Heath. I mean, she's making progress. She finished grassroots, but she's, I'm going to wait for her to finish her, her legislative. I think this was really smart of us to kind of get flexible with that, you know, let them do Module 4 ahead of Module 3 if it's easier. I think that we'll be moving people more quickly in the future. Um, but the good news is that, you know, also what's going on with Steve for Z? Um, Emails and reminder week deadline. Spoke with them and we'll schedule in the next couple of days. So it's been over two weeks since I last spoke to him to remind him to schedule. But it's been over a month since he's last. So so he's had on the 3rd of April is when I sent him his invitation for Module 2 and I still haven't had any scheduling. I spoke to him on the phone. He personally said he would schedule in a few days. It's been now over two weeks again. So I think he's got to be cut off too. Okay.
Um, yeah, I'm trying webinar. To George, you're cutting in and out. I can't hear you saying. I must have done Larry Hudson. Because uh, I had two people completed, and Mary is showing that's completed. And uh, Larry was the only other one I had scheduled. Uh, and I remember talking to somebody else. So, I, yeah, I think I, I must have done him last night before the 9 o'clock webinar. Okay. I'll, I'll, Larry, I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay. All right. So we're going to – so Steve for Z and Luella are going to be rejected, so they'll be taken off. Um, right. That everybody else is just uh, waiting for, to get through Module 3 and Module 4. Um, and, oh, and Joe, Joe Kristen, I think, is also is on the chopping block. Soon, not yet. I don't Joe know. Kristen, uh, this, no, that's DC fifty. That's uh, that's Gary. Oh, that's okay. why I don't know much about. Oh, that was guy. Gary. Okay, sorry, I forgot. I didn't write the name down. Okay, Joe Christian is the one that I need to get Gary to get on. Okay. And then so you're going to talk to Gary about him. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Go and Ed for Gary. And Ed Paraguay also, right? Yes. So both of them. All right, no problem. Okay. All right. Well, you know, I mean, it's obviously it's frustrating. You know, it's it's. I remember when we first started training, there were like at some at one point there were like 37 people on this list. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's kind of depressing, but you know, people are getting through, and you know, we we do have, you know, people that have finished, and um, I don't know. You know, I guess you know, kind of always go back to that thing that even if you know they hadn't dropped off, it's not like they would have been probably doing anything anyway. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, uh, the only other thing that I wanted to cover, we 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 just we talked earlier about the uh, about the co-leader policy. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention to you, I don't know if any of you have uh, uh, had anyone ask about uh, events coming up. I had. Uh, Terry King, uh, I was talking to him the other day, and he was talking about they were thinking possibly of doing a information table at the uh, Elkhart State Fair, yeah. State Fair or yep. County Fair or something like that. Yeah, County Fair. Uh, I'm going to put something out on this. Uh, we can request uh, uh, certain fees to be paid that, that are assessed for these fairs. Uh, National will pay those fees, but we've but we've got to make the request um, uh, in three weeks prior to the event. Okay. So I'm going to put out something on this uh, to everyone just to remind them, and we'll uh, mention it again at the uh, uh, state call. But uh, so just keep that in mind. I'm sorry to go back. There's something that came up during training that I need to run by you because I was confused. So Thomas Schultz um, was asking me, he, he, you know those those things that National sends to new district captains, you know, like the car, the, the the flyers and the things. Right. He packet. So he had, he had gotten his, and he was, you know, he was very again, he is super gung ho. But he was like, you know, how do I get more of them? Yes. Um, there's so so he needs. So he wanted to know. I said, I have absolutely no idea, but I said I would find out for him. He, he contacted me. Yeah. He slacked me. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> trying to <clears> – <throat> I have to order those, and there's a form uh, that I have to submit. I, I just – I need to ask him how what, and what kind of what kind of quantities was he wanting. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, I'll get those okay. ordered for him. All right. There's a whole bunch of that. You're talking about the print request order form. And there's a whole bunch of items available on that. Okay. There's a, they have a basic package, and then I throw on a packet of, uh, I think it's 50 hard copy past states petitions. Right. So right. They, the basic package, you get like five buttons, 100, 100 palm cards. Sure that, thing. Is that, uh, George, is that, is that the, the startup kit that you order? 
when when yeah. we assign a person as a district captain? Yep. That that's and what you're ordering sure. for him. Okay. Yep. All right. Good. Good. Okay. But not not until they become a district captain, right? Right. Okay. Well then, right. then wait. Then why does he already have them? He's, he's not well. Signed. Yeah. That's he's already. Thing. Evidently, he's already uh, used them. He's just wanting more of the palm cards and a couple of the uh, uh, handouts. He's not wanting all that other stuff. Right. No. But my question was, if they're not supposed to get that stuff until they be actually become a district captain, he has not become a district captain. And didn't become a district captain until this oh. week when I finished his training, and he already had them. He showed them to me. Oh, um, George, did you getting them too often, too early? Did you jump the gun on somebody here? No, I do all. When they're assigned, I send them the package, and then we talk about it when I do my grassroots thing. When they're assigned say, to the DC team, or when they are assigned as district captain? DC team. Ah. As soon as I onboard them. I uh, send them the welcome email, and I make the print request order, as I note in all of my text messages when I onboard somebody. Well, then we talk about the package, what to do with it, and things of that sort when we do the grassroots training. I confirm that they got it okay, and we talk about some ideas and what to do with them. I mean, we're sending out packages to, you know, even just in the last two months, and we've been, that means we've sent out packages to 15, 20 people that never, ever even signed up for training or did anything. Well, maybe they'll throw out their window and they'll throw away at the wind and somebody will pick them up. <laughs> what about, what about, uh, how, would it be d too difficult if, if we, uh, do you know how quickly those go out, George? Any idea? On the print request, they, they ask two weeks. They, add, they say it can take two weeks to get out. Once I make people. Well, do you think we ought to wait until they complete module two before we order that? Honestly, no. I would prefer to. I mean, I understand George uses them as training, but I don't see why we're sending people official Convention of States things for district captains and spending money, you know, when they're they haven't even demonstrated that they're going to ever be district captains. Well, then I'll stop putting them on the uh, convenience store trash can and put them in the laundry mat. <laughs> our district captains. All right, whatever. I mean, it's not the end of the world. It just seems like it's kind of a waste. And I guess I'm already a little bitter that they all waste so much of our time, and now it's like on top of it they're getting materials. It's kind of Holy. Oh. Every opportunity, I tell What? It's not directed towards you, Dale. I'm frustrated at these people. They're so rude. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, let's don't worry about it. Go ahead, George. Keep doing what you're doing. I will. All right. I, that's all I got for tonight. Um, our next call, I'm going to skip a week here or two, and uh, the next call will be uh, May 25th. You don't want to talk about Victor Monroe? Oh, 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 yes. Yes. Um. I put a voicemail message to him today. Uh, I have not heard back. Have any of have either of you heard about him? The last no. I heard from him was in my final module with Tim, which I have to go back to the sheet to see when that was, maybe like oh, two weeks ago. And Tim had said, I think that Tim said that he was going to expect it to be hearing back from Victor, I think on the 10th, which would have been yesterday, that right. that was when he would know what was going on and that Victor was there to uh -huh with Tim and then Tim would let us know. So I'm assuming give it a few you know, give it a few days, um, and see. Um all right, all you right. know, what he would say. So yeah. That's all I've heard. I haven't I mean I obviously I'm not it seems like it's a sensitive thing. I don't know. Um Tim doesn't really know have any specifics yet either. You know, he just has the assumption that sounds you know, from what he'd make it sound like it's if we're all thinking potentially the same thing. 
Um, yeah. But he doesn't yeah. know details. Uh, so, yeah. All right. I have a question. But I have a question. Okay. Um, back on the DCRT call sheet, uh, we kind of discussed that a little bit ago, you know, or a couple yesterday, whatever. Um, do you want me to update the number of volunteers column when I before I do the follow up tool? When I do the uh, follow up tool, new volunteers are coming in. Uh, no, no. Because we're going to we're going to uh, come up with a different procedure here on uh, the handling of new people that that come on to the district. Uh, <laughs> now they'll <laughs> Oh, <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, let's talk about it before he comes back. <laughs> You're going to Chicago for your vacation? No, my boyfriend's coming up from Florida for the week, and one of the things we're doing is we're going to visit uh, friends that live in Chicago. So, yeah. uh. But Dale thought I was going to Florida, so now he's like, you know, using that as an excuse. Oh, you're not actually going anywhere. And my point is, I told him like a month ago, I'm taking off a week. So, um, so this is not news, but he's making it sound very dramatic. So, I didn't even know you had a boyfriend. Oh, yeah, it's only been seven years. <laughs> on again, off again. I'm sorry. You're, you're cutting out. How long have you been divorced? We're not. What do you mean? We're not divorced. I'm not divorced. I thought you were divorced. No, never been married. Oh, never no. mind. <laughs> no. Just can't just the two people that can't figure out what we want to do with our lives going back and forth for seven years. You know, it's much more much much more common sense than getting married and then realizing you don't want to get married. You know, we're taking our time. Okay. Yeah, that's and what does this have to do with our meeting? Nothing. Hour ago. I got cut off here. I uh, had to call. I had to go back in. So you didn't. You didn't even miss me, did you? We were talking about you. We were glad that you were gone. <laughs> what was I talking about? Uh, Nothing important. No, oh, no Rodney. You were talking about the, you were talking talking about the follow -up, new people coming in to the follow from the follow up tool. Yeah, I told. Uh, I was saying that that we're gonna have a, we're gonna have a new new procedure on how to handle those people coming in. So, in answer to your question, George, no. Although, you know, I hate to make it more complicated, but there's sort of like a, it's, it's almost, it's a frustrating situation because, here comes Rodney, um, because, you know, at any given time when somebody's making call, you know, people are, I guess, sort of like, you know, we're, right now we're concentrating on clearing the backlog, but while, you know, during this time the things are going on and we're clearing the backlog, people are going to be coming in and it's kind of like it's almost it almost feels like we're never going to really be able to be on top of it because the numbers change every every day um so i don't know it's, it's not no not really i mean there are 100 districts follow up um a new person i mean a district can only pick up the most for five a month okay some districts Get more Right. I mean, listen, yeah. yeah, I mean, when, once we get caught up. Yeah, George, George, you're really, you're really breaking up, George. I mean, I guess, I guess, yeah. What we'll do is that, you know, again, we'll we'll stick with our plan. Once we get caught up, once we get done with the backlog, you know, then we'll realize we'll pick a date, like let's say, you know, as of, you know, May 10th or something. And once we're all caught up, we'll we'll pull out all the new people that have come in since May 10th, and we'll add them to the pile of the follow-up, you know, the new right. people. So, right. Okay. Right. Yeah, we'll figure right. it out. Rodney, are you on here? I am. I'm sorry. Well, I, it's my fault. I uh, I sent the invitation to you so late. I didn't really. No, I, I I got it. I was working convention of state stuff, and I was up till three o'clock this morning, and I just I did missed. I'm sorry. Oh, oh. 
Well, just doing like another President Trump thing, huh? Three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> yeah, I didn't want to be. <laughs> well, yeah. we're we're done, Rodney. <laughs> I figured. <laughs> Sorry. That's okay. You guys are doing you guys are doing well, by the way. What happened yesterday, part of the reason I was up till three o'clock, I was trying to get caught up on convention of state stuff and you guys kind of got left out of it, really, because you're doing so well and keeping things caught up. There was a Mark Meckler yes, early yesterday morning. Uh, I can't, sent a message that well, there was concern about people not getting contacted in the LMT right away, and then it led to in process as well. But it was mostly the new ones and he was saying that people should be contacted by phone within the first 24 hours after they submit their application and then he asked for uh, individual status of, from all the RDs of each state in the region what they've got going on the numbers all of that I'll turn my camera on I guess and so I had to go go through all 13 states and do all that yesterday and had other things I had planned. And it was just kind of frustrating. So then, Jenny, you guys didn't get them, I don't think, because I went through them. But they decided, you know how you get the emails from Garrett on the social media warrior and content writers and all that other stuff? Right. Well, <clears throat> Jenny went through and sent emails to all the states on all the DCs they had uh, open and in process by number and uh, so you guys didn't get one I don't think uh, no, I didn't, I didn't but it was it was a pretty stressful day I got <clears throat> some of those high numbers in the DC's open and in process or in states in our region one of them primarily Oklahoma but they named off some others but Oklahoma, we don't have a state director anymore. Uh, before this, he decided he needed to step down because he didn't have time. They got like 94 DCs uh, open and in process there, and they don't really have a grassroots coordinator that does any, anything there. They, he just does a follow-up tool, which I'm going to change his title because it's really all he does. So. It was a crazy day. Mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Well. Well, I'm glad we didn't make it worse by being bad also. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. Love you guys. You're doing it right. <sighs> Rodney, you, you might you might enjoy this. Um, we have a, a uh, QRT applicant on our LMT. And I communicated with Jenny and she told me she will handle that she handles all the QRT applicants well <laughs> uh, I could see on the LMT I, I check it from what every once in a while it's still on there and <laughs> and she she uh, she's tried to contact the guy she's uh, sending me emails and he's not responding and uh, so I sent her an email today. I slacked her actually, asking her uh, uh, if we should uh, keep him on there. Uh, she hadn't contacted him since March 29th. <laughs> <laughs> so he's been on there since before March 29th in process. And uh, and she said. She responded to me saying, "Oh my goodness, I let one get loose, or one get by, or something like that." And uh, so she's going to reject him. So uh, thought maybe you might enjoy knowing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! See, that's that's why these the social media warrior and the QRT shouldn't show up in the state's LMTs. 
Essentially, no, it shouldn't. They shouldn't. No. Yeah. So, as a matter of fact, in Florida, well, I shouldn't be naming states or anybody. Uh, there's a brand new social media warrior that uh, he's not really causing trouble, but Monica kind of called him out on. Well, I didn't call him out. He got a hold of the state to kind of give him some guidance because he was in that private social media warrior Facebook group and started a conversation in there that I guess she didn't think appropriate, but I I, I got all the details on it, and it, it's, it's there's nothing wrong with what he's doing. <laughs> and, but they're putting it off on the state to correct him, and I this was on a phone call this afternoon with a, the state yeah. team. And I told him, I said, well, see, this is one of my concerns with these state social media warriors that aren't really state social media warriors. I said, you can go back to Monica or Garrett or whoever and tell them this, that they trained him. And if that he's doing something he's not supposed to do, then that is up to them to correct that training. It's not up to the state right. to do that because they right. trained him. Right, right. right. Yeah. So I hope you guys don't get caught in situations like that where really the situation's out of your control. Right. <laughs> but they want you to fix it. Right, right. Yeah, I hope that doesn't happen either because I will be really mad. You guys have never seen me really mad yet. It's not good. <laughs> oh Lord, oh Lord. That would you know. We don't want that we don't want that, Rodney. Well, by the way, Dale, just as a side point, because it's relevant to our conversation, the situation with uncalled districts is not nearly as bad as it appears on the Georgia sheet. Um, I just went through all the districts, and there are only 20 districts that haven't been called yet, and if we take out three that are Mindy's, which she'll finish in the next week, and one that's Gary, that leaves only 16 districts that are not, haven't been called yet really? at all. So it's not any, yeah, I went into all of them individually, and at least 10 of the ones that were listed as no calls made actually were completely done. So that doesn't count the partials, but the good, I mean, it's good news, bad news. It's good news in that we don't actually need, you know, to make calls in 35, 40 districts. The bad news is that there's all these districts that have already been called, and we don't have district captains. So right. it's as always. Yeah, Rodney, you, you, uh, you missed our, our, the first part of our call. We're, we're, uh, we're going to revise our uh, district captain recruitment program, and uh, we're going to we're going to handle it differently. And we're going to uh, uh, Rachel's uh, putting together a different tracking report for us. So uh, you'll you'll be uh, we'll we'll bring you in uh, at future meetings and let you know where we stand on that. But I think this will this will be a much better uh, much better uh, program. Okay. We we still we still have uh, we still have too many districts out there, obviously without district captains, and we need to be contacting the volunteers in those districts, and uh, we need to get our funnel going again. Our funnel is uh, shrinking. So we need to get more in there in that funnel. You know, I wonder, uh, Dale. Yeah. You know, my concern, like I said, is that you know, I mean, the, there are there seem to be that many, many, many districts where we've already gone through all the volunteers and no, no interest. Um, I, I, I'm not optimistic that finishing up. You know, we can finish up all these recruitment calls in these 20 districts by the end of the month, and I don't. You know, it's not like we're going to be getting. You know, by the time. You get someone who answers the phone, you get somebody who's interested, and then they say they're going to apply, and then whether they actually apply or not, um, I don't know. You know, what, what's gonna, we're going to have to think about what we're going to do next um, to try right. to get leaders because it's not going to be the solution. You know, I think I, we were hoping early on that because we knew we had so many district captains that weren't making calls, I think we were hoping, oh, there's some gems in here that we just haven't ever tried to get before. And I think that has proven to be true. I mean, we found some great people through this process, but it's certainly not going to turn out to be a solution to the issue, which is our biggest issue, which is, you know, we just don't have enough people, um, enough districts. We don't have enough district captains. It seems like, and I don't know where, what, what, what pool we're pulling from after this. You know, what, I guess maybe, you know, calling people who said they didn't want to volunteer, although, I mean, that doesn't seem like a good use of time since 90% of the people that say they want to volunteer don't even want to volunteer. So, 
I mean, it's sort of like, so, I don't know. But, I mean, yeah. Well, I, you know, it's, I, I, guess I, I guess I never thought that we might ever get to this point, but if, in fact, we get to that point, where we've contacted all the volunteers, uh, we've contacted everybody we can contact, and we're still without district captains, then we just have to go on uh, and uh, and and uh, make sure we contact every every volunteer that comes in on that follow-up tool. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what else to do. Uh, rely on, of course, rely on our comms team to put the word out, rely on uh, the national uh, 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 advertising and, and no. I don't know what I don't I don't know what else what other pool we could go to. Yeah, it, uh, <laughs> I was thinking if you called all the volunteers, I guess you do a MailChimp blast to all the supporters or everybody that's not a volunteer, but also volunteers, just everybody. Um, Except the existing DCs and leaders, uh, uh, Facebook ads—they cost money, but if it's needed like this, we could justify it. I think I have to throw out the thing to justify it to get Mike Ruthenberg's approval. I don't have a problem doing that. Now, you know, another thing, another concept is um, uh, doubling up on districts, yeah. where you have good district captain. Put them in charge of two districts. You got a good region captain. Put him or her in charge of two regions. Right. Uh, yeah, we, we had to do that here in Missouri for a long time. And we still do it, actually. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's certainly a less of an onerous thing, you know, being a past state, and you know, given that we're starting these people, you know, someone has already contacted every volunteer in their district, you know, before we'll be doing this, because that's the work we're doing now. We've already contacted all. So, so if somebody was asked to take over a second district, at least they would know that all the people in that second district have already, the volunteers at least, have already been contacted. So I guess it could maybe be doable, um, you know, at some point. But anyway, all right. Well, yeah. Not, not just to pass states, because we're having trouble with that. In mean, North Carolina, they've got target districts. they got target districts are districts where they really need a district captain and somebody to work with the people to get the legislation passed with key legislators that they need to be working on, and they can't get district captains into those. West Virginia, I don't know if you've seen it, Dale, but uh, I can't remember, Christine Miller or whoever it is, West Virginia is a non-pass state, and they... Uh, She's mentioned on two state director webinars now in the question box that it's only her and the state director, or she's the state director, her and the grassroots coordinator, are the only ones they have to work the LMT and the follow-up tool because they don't have the people to do. Yeah, I remember her. I remember her saying that. Yeah, I think it's she's the state director, and I think she has the grassroots coordinator, and that's it. The two of them. Yeah, so it's wow. everywhere. Wow. Yeah. So ma mail blast to everybody, and uh, we look at Facebook ads for sure. Well, our our, our Facebook uh, our Facebook editor is doing a good job. I don't know if you've noticed, uh, um, Rachel, but John's doing a good job on that. Yeah. The problem is though is that you know. People who are not already following our page are not going to see it. The thing about the ads is because it's paid, it shows up on people's feeds even if they don't currently follow our state. So um, you have to actively, you know, say you want to see ads from Convention of States first or hide or Facebook will hide them from you. I mean, you know, we know all the issues going on with Facebook. So I think the idea is that if we do a paid ad, you know, that will show up on people who may not have even been following Convention of States, right? Yeah. Yeah, that's how it works. That's the difference. So that would be the benefit. So, you know, I mean, you know, that would be something that would reach more people. Yeah, I think maybe, you know, even doing the mail, the email blast, you know, there there might be people who sign, you know, again, because we had this issue where nobody's been in touch with people for so long on some of our districts, you know, there might be people that two years ago when they signed the petition, they said they didn't want to volunteer, but maybe now they're retired. Maybe now they have time to. 
So it might be worthwhile to do the, you know, to do a mail blast out to. I mean, it, it shouldn't take too much effort to every supporter in the state. Um, I don't see why that would hurt. Just the it wouldn't hurt. I've never had any luck with them, quite right, honestly. But, well, yeah. <clears throat> I think I think the uh, the open the open percentage is is quite low. Right. Um, so yeah. the vast majority of them never even get opened. Yeah. All right. Emails that never get opened. That was how I became a district mm -hmm. captain because I got an email like that. So maybe I'm partial to it. Oh, you did. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, you know, as everyone knows my story, I signed the petition. I got a follow-up tool email, a follow-up email from Dale Parish back in 2015, telling me that my district captain would have been contacting me. This was in like. October. I waited around. Nobody ever contacted me. Nobody ever contacted we, we, me. We, we, we contacted you. We got around well, to contacting you. No, but it was, telling me, it was telling me that my district captain would contact me. The district captain never contacted me. And then eventually, I think it was in like November, I got an email blast from Diane that said they were looking for district captains. And, you know, I opened it and I read it and, you know, responded. So. And here you are. And here I am. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> if I'd only known. <laughs> and we love it. We love you. Yes. Rodney, we're 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 taking a big chance here in Indiana. We're uh, we're gonna let Rachel go on vacation <laughs> next week. Oh man. So yeah. You might want to check in on us from time to time. <laughs> see if we're still here. Oh. Well, we survived George being out on his. Yeah. Thing, right? was yeah. Thing. But at least he was I back in during the night. You know, at least George was answering, was reading Slack and stuff, you know, each night when he got back from that. I'm, like, going to be out for a week. Like, no, I'm not. My boyfriend's coming to visit from Florida, and he already told me, like, because I can't even finish a conversation on the phone with him without being like, oh, I just got, I have to call Dad. Dale's calling or this or that. He's like, all right, they're not paying you. You haven't taken a vacation since you started. I haven't seen you in the, forever, and you're not allowed to check that thing. He doesn't know what it's called. It's Slack. He goes, you're not allowed to check it, or I'm not coming up. And I said, okay, that's fair. So I made him a promise not to go back on it. So I'm going to be gone. I mean, emergency, emer true emergencies, you can call me, and I'll answer the phone, but I'm not. Yeah, other than that, I'm gone. Can I text you? I mean, you can. I might not answer the text for, you know, a minute. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Have, like right. I said, if it happens too much, he'll take my phone away. So I can't. That's a well-deserved well -deserved vacation you're going to have. Well-deserved. So. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully still you'll, you'll be a lot nicer when you come back. Don't don't yeah. bet on it. I'll relax. And <laughs> I'll still be me. <laughs> I'm not gonna have a personality transplant. It's still gonna be the same person. Damn, I was I was so looking forward to that. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, Rodney, you got any more good good news for us? Uh, drinking. I think we should all start drinking during these calls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good good plan. Yeah, COS University is about to come online, I think. Oh, really? Really? Yeah, they want us RDs to look, take a look at it and make sure, I guess, login and everything looks okay on a QA server. And then I'm expecting next week they'll let it go. Let, let it go. <clears throat> I don't know what the courses are going to be like. So Rachel, do we want to then consider revising our training program to incorporate some C uh, COS University courses? I mean, I'd certainly look at them, and I would, you know, I think that they could complement it. I don't, th I don't think that from a substantive point of view they would change, you know, the, you know, with the content that we're delivering. Right. Um, it certainly would have been nice to have that option, you know, three months ago when I had to make all these videos and do it all myself. But um, I'm not bitter. Uh, but anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> no, you, so, and, you and some others. Right, yeah. exactly. So, um, but, but, yeah, and I think, you know, I was actually thinking more sort of, you know, with our talks, and I know we haven't really been able to focus on this because there's always another disaster on the looming. But, you know, the whole continuing education thing, which I think is really important that we, we've always talked about wanting to implement, that those could be very helpful for that um, as yeah. well. You know, some of the more advanced ones. I, so I guess my answer is 
I'm more interested in the more advanced stuff. I don't, I don't foresee that there would be an intro to video other than maybe like a general convention of state concept thing that, that would supplant, you know, what we are currently using because ultimately, you know, we don't want to lose the person, the, the, the personalization. We're not going to want to lose the face to face and we're not going to want to lose the Indiana specific stuff. Um, so yeah, I don't think it'll be a huge difference, but of course having more resources is always good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So yeah. yeah, I heard you. Is that George? George? I mean, most of it was like how to set up a table at a gun show. And, uh, right. Okay. You know, yeah. Maybe like the, sound the, the basic course was too national for us. Right. Yeah. So even the uh, DC course and stuff like that, I've heard that it's like modeled, they incorporated the manual into it and stuff like that. So, yeah, it may not fit your program. I mean, I'm sure it's going to be, you know, not half state specific. I mean, so much of our training program is half state specific. And obviously, we already go over the training manual to the extent that it's relevant to anything. Um, so, yeah, like I said... So, you know, I remember, you know, I remember when I came on, you know, I watched some of the, you know, the legal ones when I was coming on as a legislative liaison, like some of the constitu the more advanced constitutional kind of um, videos and stuff. Those were interesting and helpful. So there's, you know, there's always potential for, for content, but we'll definitely, we'll definitely look at them and see. Like, there was a problem with Thomas Schultz. He was, uh, he watched the uh, help video and he was Boy, George, you're really breaking up, George. Yeah. All right, good night. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> it was something about Thomas Schultz, though, and I was interested to hear what it was. But yeah, yeah. Oh well. All right. I'll put it in Slack. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put it in Slack. Okay. All right. Uh, Rodney, one other thing I wanted to mention to you. Uh, you know, we, we've gotten uh, um, a couple uh, uh, applicants on the LMT for state content writer. And uh, I found out we have an actual training manual for a state content writer. So mm -hmm. I, uh, on this one applicant, I sent it to him. And then I, I copied our SCC and our current state content writer, and I got the reply that uh, they had never seen this manual, and I got the reply that it was too painful for them to read it. Both of them? I thought it was just me that said that. As they, <laughs> our own state content writer can't can't read the training manual for the for a state content writer because it's grammatically and so forth so bad it's, uh, well the ironic thing about it was that it one of the things it said in that manual is that these people at the at the national level will be proofreading all their documents and training them and I was like well, I hope the person that wrote that training manual is not the one who's proofreading the post because then we're in trouble I thought it was bad Rodney knows about this. He went through with me the whole legislative liaison thing where I was like, my eyes are bleeding. I can't. Yes. <laughs> you see, Rodney, you see what we're faced with here. We can't. Uh... <laughs> but anyway, I thought that was, I get a Slack message back that's, so, that's too painful to read this. It's <laughs> funny, but it's not. <laughs> And here I read through it. I thought it was pretty good. <laughs> I guess that wow. says something for me. But uh, uh, yeah, you're probably like me. I just blow through things. Yeah, that's what you mean. Whatever. Yeah, just get the general idea, you know. And no, not, if somebody uh, if somebody's like sending me an email, if somebody's communicating with me casually, I'm not. I guess I don't have that turned on, and it doesn't bother me so much. But when you're getting something official, you know, this is an organization. 
that I'm, you know, that, that I'm giving my time to support. So I think I tend to be more critical because I'm like, this is supposed to be professional. This is what we're going to be giving to people who are really, you know, we want to bring on talented people. We want content writers that are actually have experience writing for, you know, for real publications. And the idea that we send them something that is clearly shows that we don't even know how to write. It, it frustrates me to no end. You know, when it's like, if it, if, you know, when it comes from the top and that we're trying to sell, because that's one of the things, too, in the training program that I always say, you know, one of the benefits to our training program and being so organized and put together is that I think we, it's more than just tra preparing people. The idea is these people are signed on to this organization that they, you know, saw on Facebook. They heard Sean Handy talk about it. They're potentially going to give time out of their life to us. They want to have a sense of confidence that we're, for, we're, we have our act together. And, of course, we don't have our act together, but we want them to at least think we have our act together so that they feel confident, like, this is worth me taking time out of my life to give to this organization because I feel like the people running it know what they're doing and are going to actually use my time efficiently so that I don't feel like it's wasted. So when I, that's why it kind of it just it's when I do something, you know, especially when it's also being handed down as a fiat, like you guys have to follow this and you got to give this to your people. Oh, come on, seriously, you can hire somebody who actually has experience proofreading to read this before you send it out. You know, I'm sorry. You know, I, just because you're, you know, you're Mark Meckler's wife's best friend from high school, which is how I imagine it, you know, and they gave you this job to be the person who writes these things, that's not enough for the rest of us. Like, I'm sure you're a wonderful person, but that doesn't mean that you should feel qualified for this job. You know, I would love to play the guitar professionally, but I can't, I'm not good at it. So I don't expect somebody to give me a job doing it. <laughs> okay, I, don't know, I don't know. Rodney, maybe we should give her an extra week, huh? Two weeks. Uh, I was going to say she needs a vacation. <laughs> all right, all right. That's enough. Oh, I won't. I won't stir up any more here. So. Okay. Uh, anything else, Rodney? <laughs> no. No. All right. I got to, to keep got to keep working and see if I can stay up to do it. <laughs> <laughs> really, you haven't you haven't uh, did you stay up all night? I did. I was up till three o'clock this morning. Oh, you were up till three. Okay. Yeah. So you, you did go to bed at some point in time, huh? Yeah, for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Okay. Have a good weekend, you everybody. Too. All right. You too. Thank you, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>